everyone um welcome to the last episode of our summer youth conversation series uh, never mind that it's not summer anymore we're joined by our very spe a very special final guest um before but before we introduce him we're going to go ahead and introduce um our panelists who are interviewing our guest today um we have myself sara um mariam Afifa and Mohsen. We're all very excited and we were all previous um, interview interviewers for the last uh, few episodes throughout the summer. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're already Hello. recording because we know we're short on time. So I'm just going to let all the, our youth take it away. Okay, great. All right. Um, hello, Governor Inslee. Welcome to um, our last episode of our Summer Youth Conversations series. Um, and we have three topics that we want to ask you about, but how's your day going so far? Uh, it's a beautiful day. Mariners <laughs> are going to win their next game Thursday and all justice will be restored to the world. <laughs> yeah, baseball will finally swing back in <laughs> Seattle's favor. So. Mariam, do you want to start off with our first topic of conversation? Yep, we'll get right into it. So August 15th marked the one year anniversary since the US military withdrawal from Afghanistan. Afghan refugees are coming in waves to areas such as Dulles, Houston, and Washington State. Unfortunately, they're not getting the necessary and appropriate amount of legal and resettlement support. And because of this, far too many individuals are being deported. So our first question for you is, what are you doing to make sure the Afghan refugees are receiving the support and resources they need so they don't become I'm at risk for being deported back to Afghanistan. Well, I appreciate that. We are trying to utilize all the dollars that have been appropriated by our legislature to make those uh, assets available. And we're looking to your suggestions on the way to make that more effective. And I would be appreciative of any suggestions you can give me on what is the biggest need and what do you think the most tenable way we would be able to provide those services. Could you give me any suggestions in that regard? Yeah, definitely. And I think we're looking at like housing is one of the biggest ones and just general resources, especially if there's kids coming along and bigger families. That's definitely one of the biggest needs that we're seeing in that community and housing is definitely one of the top ones um, because it's so difficult to find, especially in Washington state and the greater Seattle area. Well, you know, we're trying to help housing throughout our, for all of our people who live here, both, you know, uh, former residents and new residents. I just got off a call to try to talk about how we can increase access to housing. We, uh, we added $800 million of state funding last year at my request that we are providing for additional housing, uh, which is uh, available to many of our new residents. So we hope to increase that to larger sums potentially next year. Uh, this may be in the weeds a little bit, but one of the things you could help us with is we're trying to find places to build new housing. And that's a problem because we have zoning ordinances that, that make it impossible to build duplexes and triplexes and apartment buildings and condominiums. It makes it more difficult for us to have housing available for Afghan refugees and non-refugees. So it's one of the issues I hope to make progress on this legislative session. Perhaps your organization can help us by telling legislators, look, we need more housing. Refugees more need more housing, but if we can't build it, if we have, don't have a place to build it, it's a problem. So I'm lobbying you a little bit to help in that, in that regard. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you so much. That was a really good conversation. Another point I wanted to quickly add on before we move on to a FIFA was, um, I think one thing that we were talking about that CARE devotes a lot of time to now, especially, is um, the lack of like legal um, support for filing the correct paperwork for Afghan refugees to be able to extend their stay in the US um, and not have to be deported back. So that's something that's been also a concern. Um, but yeah, just something else to think about. Um, we got, but Afifa, you wanna move on to the next topic of conversation? Thank you. Yeah, before, before we leave that, uh, Rochelle Davis is on our call. 
Rochelle, remind me of what we did in this score. I believe we did something in the last session on this, did we not? Yes, yes, we did. Good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rochelle, one of the governor's policy advisors. So we did um, allocate $5 million to support Afghan uh, refugees who have arrived uh, between July 2021 uh, and September 22. Uh, during this time period, which was called the Operation Allies Welcome, we've welcomed over 4,400 Afghans to Washington State, which is uh, incredible. And we're just so excited to have these new neighbors. Um, uh, one thing I did also want to point out is Washington State has a long history and a long tradition of welcoming refugees, and we've welcomed we've welcomed refugees uh, dating back to the 1970s. And over that time, we have had over 150,000 folks uh, come to Washington uh, as refugees and begin their lives here in the United States, uh, here in Washington. In addition to the five million that we provided just for Afghan arrivals, there was a larger uh, pool of money that the legislature also allocated. It was thirty million dollars, and this uh, this uh, pool was for the broader refugee and immigrant population. And the Afghan uh, arrivals were also eligible. Our, our agencies at DSHS and DOH and Department of Commerce are all working with our community-based organizations. We're particularly interested in working with. Afghan and Muslim led organizations to provide mental health and uh, mental care services, educational supports, training, naturalization, and those legal services that uh, Sarah mentioned, uh, housing and family stabilization programs. And we have some great partners, and CARE is one of those critical partners that we have for reaching this population. Rochelle, do you know where we are on a per capita basis as far as how many Afghan refugees we've been able to, to bring to our state? relative to other states? We're, we're in the top. I don't know in terms of the ranking um, where Washington is, but traditionally we're in the top five for all uh, refugee populations. And because we had a well-established uh, Afghan community here before operations, uh, uh, Operation Welcome Allies started, uh, I believe we're in the top, but I, I, I don't have that information for you, Governor, the exact um, ranking for Washington Well, we'd State. like to be number one because these folks are people who will help build our state and they're allies with us for so long, many of them. So uh, I'm glad we've had vigorous efforts to invest in these services and we'll continue uh, that effort. And I'm glad we got a youth group here leading on this subject too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think it's important. And we, yeah, I think Kara did uh, ha, has a grant for um, responding for stuff like this. So thank you for that. And um, Afifa, you want to head over to our next one? It's a little bit less noted, but we fun still. For sure, yeah. Um, not to completely switch topics on you, but this past July was actually the first Muslim American Heritage Month in Washington State. Um, this event made a huge impact on our community, especially the youth, and helped us feel really recognized in our presence in this state. Um, I'm curious, what motivated you to sign this proclamation? Well, a recognition of talent. You know, you look at the young leaders on this call, and the intelligence it represents and the promise it represents. I really believe that um, Washington State is a is a very unique state. It's the most beautiful state from an environmental perspective, and it is the most one of the most beautiful state in its openness to uh, bring people from around the world to help build our state. And it is a genius of our state. It's why we have been so successful. It's why we've built the best jet airliners and the best software and some of the bio, best biomedical research. It's because we bring people with incredible talent from around the world to help build our state. That's why we've been so successful. And so I want to continue that heritage. Rochelle mentioned that we've always been uh, really welcoming of refugees. That tradition started perhaps with Republican Governor Dan Evans when he welcomed Vietnamese refugees when other states did not in the early 70s, mid 70s. And this has been a very successful thing about why Washington state has been such a leading place for people to build their lives and the whole state. So, you know, if it works, keep doing it and, and opening our arms to refugees works to build our state. And here's the reason I mentioned this. 
opening your home to refugees is something we do out of compassion, out of love, of recognition of our fellow brothers and sisters from around the world, that all humanity is in one the family of, of humans. But there's a self-interest here too. This helps build our state. When an Afghan young person comes here and starts a business, uh, as they mature and puts non-Afghan refugees to work, it's good for everybody. So what I, the point I want to make is, this is the right thing to do from a sense of compassion and morality, but it is also the right thing to do for our self-interest for non-refugees. And I like to focus on that as well. Absolutely, that is always so amazing to hear. Um, not to push it right back onto the topic of Muslim American Heritage Month, but I also noticed that this act is actually not being continued the next year. What plans do you have in the future to be nurturing this representation of not only refugees within Washington state, but also just the greater Muslim population? Well, I'm not sure that it won't be continued. We, I don't think we've thought through the exact uh, strategy to continue our efforts, but I wouldn't take the the one year part of that as just a, a limitation necessary. But in answer to your broader question, look, we want to continue funding streams of the kind of things we've done for a housing subsidy, for legal assistance that we talked about, for language assistance, for health care. You know, these needs will continue on. I'll be proposing my budget in December, and that's where I propose things to the legislature. And, I, you know, I don't, we haven't come up with the exact dollar proposals, but we know the need is continuing. And we do, you know, that, that budget cycle is limited, but the need is not. So you can look forward to continued uh, investment in, in this general. Uh, effort that the state is making. So we'll know more in December. And then I hope you'll ask the legislatures to follow my leadership because I have to get the votes from the legislature. We're not a royal system here. We're a democracy. So I need the legislators to follow me. I hope you'll be vigorous in talking to them. And I'm actually serious about that. We're talking today, but I hope you'll be put, put part of your efforts into talking to legislators about these subjects too, because I will need their support for me to, to get the votes uh, to continue these efforts. Absolutely, thank you for sharing that little piece of advice. I think that's something a lot of youth can internalize in the future when it comes to bringing change. Um, so I'm gonna let Sara take over um, alongside any others who wanna ask you any more questions. So yeah, actually Governor Inslee, what you said was like a really good segue into our last segment. Um, which was to like, you know, just start wrapping up our interview. We want to bring it back to the youth, like you were talking about. And um, I'll start with a lot of students and younger students are intimidated by like getting involved in politics because the, the field is intimidating. And especially for minorities, it's difficult to see representation or pathways to become involved. So what advice would you give generally for students trying to get involved in politics? Uh, you know, I wanted to say we used to have a saying when I was your age, which is don't trust anybody over the age of 35. That was sort of the working uh, <laughs> uh, I iconic statement of my generation. You know, it's interesting when you say some people are intimidated. I do think that's something we need to talk about, about how to build people's confidence to become involved, particularly when you're new to the territory, right? Even if you are refugees, if you are a recent immigrant, how do we people? How do we get people to have confidence? Uh, and I and I looked for your suggestion on that. But what I would tell you is that you're entitled to have confidence. You're entitled to be able to introduce yourself to a legislator in a grocery store or on the sidewalk or in their office or by a phone call. You're entitled to. You're 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 worthy of that confidence to have a conversation with any elected public officials. And the reason are is that you're the boss, you know, they work for you, I work for you, right? So you, you're the one who's, who's really should be the leader. And I, I need to listen to your desires and your criticisms. So I guess what I would say is I would encourage you to encourage your fellows to understand 
that uh, they're entitled to, to be leaders in their own right, talking to their elected officials. Now, how do we do that? How do we instill that confidence? Well, it's an interesting question. I look for your advice on that. I guess maybe one thing we should think about is how do we create portals or avenues for that? Maybe you and I should think about how we create a, you know, a, a Muslim a student legislator day in Olympia to, you know, maybe you ought to think about doing that. So we, we tee up a conversation so that your colleagues will feel they got a door or an avenue for those conversations. Maybe we should think about that. Um, and I'm going to ask Rochelle to share any ideas that she can with you to make sure you can share with your colleagues just, you know, where's the entry point? Where's the email? Where do I send email? Where do I send a text? Where do I send a, my latest TikTok? I'm going to ask Rochelle to help to make sure that you have those doors open to you. Uh, the other thing is, you know, voting, running for office. We encourage people to do that as soon as humanly possible. Now, uh, citizenship is an issue. We got to work on that, of course. But we're open to, to new pathways in this regard. Rochelle, I'm, I'm going to look for you to, to help make sure we, we give these leaders that information, if you can help us on that. Certainly, Governor. So ledge.wa.gov is a great resource. That is where you can go to find your legislators. And we are so lucky in Washington to have our first uh, Muslim American legislator, and that's Senator Jasmine Trudeau. I'm so excited. She represents my district in Tacoma. And I, I think reaching out to other folks um, to be a mentor. Uh, your mentor doesn't have to be of the same religion or look like you, but someone who's passionate about the same issues that you're passionate about um, is, is really important. I, I think uh, the governor has a great story that he can share with you about how he got involved in politics. Um, and governor, I think this would be great for you to share about your story in SELA with the students. Well, I'm impressed. You think it's a great story, Rochelle. You've had to listen to it so many times. I'm embarrassed to have to tell it again. I got involved in politics uh, trying to build a new school in a little town called Sela, Washington in the Yakima Valley. And we had trouble passing a bond issue to finance the school. Trudy and I were active in co-chairing an effort. We finally passed it on the sixth try. And then the legislators fouled up the whole situation because they changed the funding formula where they were going to cut our funding in half. So I was angry about that and tried to get them to see the light and finally decided I should just run for the legislature. I thought that was the most effective way to advance the cause to get more schools built. So I ran and won in an upset. No one thought I had a prayer. I actually didn't have a prayer. I just wasn't smart enough to understand that when I ran. Uh, but I won and have been in and out of public office for a quarter of a century. So who knows? You may be holding my, the seat I'm in at some point. Uh, but I'm glad you're inspired enough to talk with me to share your ideas, it's really great. Hey, before I go, can I ask you a question? Uh, we have a lot of people in Iran today who are seeking some additional freedoms, uh, particularly uh, Muslim women in Iran, uh, particularly young women. Do you have any insights on what we can or do or how we should think about that uh, tension that's existing in Iran now? Do you guys get involved in any of those discussions at all? Um, I can start off and then I think Sarah might have something to add there. Um, I think personally, as a Muslim woman, there's a lot to be said about what's going on in Iran. Um, however, I do think a lot of it also involves taking a step back and understanding why Iranian women may be doing certain things and looking at it from a place of respect because they are protesting in the ways that mean something to them. And that's something that we not may not be able to understand. So I think the most important thing is looking at all of this with a really open view and promoting that open view um, and really destigmatizing the different between religion, government, and all these disparate concepts that are merging together to see what's happening in Iran. And I, so I think on our side, um, just education and making sure that you have open views is really, really important. And we can play a 
pretty big role in making sure that others around us are seeing things in the right light. But um, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, you said it so well. I think that it's the whole, the mass of the protest, much, much of it is about um, political people and protesting the government. But it's really easy because they're using such a visible symbol that many associate with a religion to conflate um, the oppression that they're facing at the hands of their government with the oppression that some people mistake to be Islam. And that conflation can be really dangerous, especially when um, it's talked about in public discourse. And so we really need to be wary, especially in the terminology that we use when addressing this topic, which is really important that we do, um, that we are not um, promoting or supporting um, dangerous um, stereotypes or ideas or prejudices or promoting them um, even on accident. So yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up, um, Governor Inslee. And to wrap us up real quick, uh, Mohsen, you want to give the governor our final question sure. or a little yeah. tidbit? So um, just to, just as an outro, um, I was I just was wondering, uh, when you were in high school, did you imagine you'd be in this position? And if you could give your high school self a piece of advice what would it be uh, oh my gosh uh did i imagine myself to be in the position absolutely not uh, i was in the lieutenant governor's office though when i was your age i went down to olympia because our high school basketball team at ingram high school won the state championship so the governor invited us down to meet him and that, i was very excited by that i'd never been to olympia before and my home team went down there. We didn't get to meet him. He was out of town that day, but we got to meet the lieutenant governor who took us out to lunch, which was very exciting. So that was my first uh, exposure to politics to some degree, but I didn't think about myself. I've always, I've always been interested in public servant, public issues, but I never thought of myself being in public servant myself till I was in my upper thirties when I ran for the state legislature. So it, you know, it, it was not a lifelong pursuit. I have, I have very much uh, appreciated and been honored to have public service. It's a wonderful life. I encourage all of you to think about it at some point because it's a great way to be able to help your community and your family. It's, a, it's, it's really fun because you get to be exposed to all kinds of different people. It's a very broadening experience to be involved in public service because you get to meet everybody in your community. You know, you kind of get in a rut sometimes. You have certain friends, you walk on certain streets, but when you run for office or you're in public life, you get to know everybody. So it's a very, very exciting prospect. I love serving. Uh, what advice would I give um, to myself? I think what I would tell myself is, when there's three seconds to go in the game against Ballard and you get the ball in the left wing and it looks like you can hit a running hook shot, think twice about taking it. Because when you miss it and you lose the game, which is what happened to me, um, you know, you feel kind of badly. So don't, maybe I'll revise that. If you take the running hook shot, make it. That's the advice I would give to myself. In my next life, I'm sure I'll make I'll make that shot. I wish I had a more serious answer to your serious question. No, so it's good. <laughs> there are so, so many things that I would play. tell myself. I don't I don't want to get started. <laughs> hey, no, basketball is a good place to start. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for spending all um, this time with us. I know. Um, it was pretty tight, but I'm really glad we all got to speak to you. Well, I'm, too. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm very inspired to have young leaders. Your uh, sophistication is very impressive to me. Uh, oh. When I asked you this question about Iran and your answers were so uh, refined and and wise, you, you seem like you guys are all 70 years of age. You're so wise. I don't know how you got to be wise so fast, but you counseled humility and respect it. Anyway, so I love the fact that you're interested in public life. I hope you, you give it some thought in your own life. And I'll look forward to our next conversation. Uh, Katie, thank you so much for your leadership. 
Rochelle, I know you're gonna do some more work with this group. And uh, I'll look forward to further, further conversations. Thank you so much. Be well and go Mariners. Thank Rochelle, so are we done right now? No, yes, thank, thank you. you. Be well, okay, thank take care. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys so much for tuning into our last session of the Summer Youth Series. I hope everyone was able to learn more about legislature and public service through this interview with Governor Inslee, along with other interviews this summer. Thank you, and look out for more CARE Washington content. Bye! Okay, bye. Thank you.